gotta turn some of these Mwah! into a beautiful bee. So without further ado, guys, this is Weekend Bee Time. All right, guys, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in again. Um, thank you to all those guys, man, and all those people who are subscribing at the moment, man, and uh, giving me thumbs up and interacting with the channel. I really appreciate it, man. It's uh, really motivating me just to keep going, man. And, uh, you know, just like sharing the knowledge, man. And it's good to see that there's so many beat makers out there, man, in Germany and, and shout outs to the US, you know, and just in my own hometown of Australia, man, all, all of that, man, my own country, I should say. But um, we're going to continue making beats, man. Every week we get together, make another beat. This week I got something special. I'm wearing my special jacket. This is my mobster jacket, you know what I mean? My name is Uvlatsky. My mobster jacket. I'm going to show you fellas how to make, uh, how to make some beats. One thing we're going to focus on this week, guys, is I'm going to show you guys how to create a core, core beat, right? Using your ears to pick out the sample, but it's going to create a core beat. It's going to be a generic beat, and then for you guys to be able to play your keys on top, for you guys to be able to sample keys like I like, but that's what it's all about. Sample-based hip-hop, man. That's what I'll be showing everybody here. So thanks again for tuning in, guys. We're going to get into it. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video, man. The beat turned out all right, man. And um, I've got some advanced, right? I'm just, just a little bit of a warning. I got, well, it's not a warning, but just give me the heads up, man. We've got some more advanced type of um, chopping for, for breaks and, and all that sort of stuff. So we're going into some detail, man, as usual, all right, man? So come along for the ride, guys. Um, yeah, man. Thanks again. Peace. Hi, guys. So um, the first... First sample we're gonna be looking at is uh, I'm gonna be trying to put put together some drums, all right? So uh, we got Phil Collins. Uh, the album is called "Hello, I Must Be Going," and uh, the track is number three. It's called "Like China, Like China, Like China Way, The China Way." All right. So it's track three on that, and this is what it sounds like. Alright, uh, that's the part there, right? What I'm gonna be doing is um is I'm gonna be I know it sounds busy, but sometimes you could hear how uh some of the other instruments back off and allow the drum to play on its own. Maybe one snare you'll get out of it, something like that, man. So that's what I'm gonna be focusing on, man. Trying to get bits of... I won't get a full drum kit out of that. I know that, man. Just by listening to it. But I might be able to get a snare that I could stack or do something like that with, alright? Just uh, just having fun with it, man. Sometimes you gotta be resourceful, alright? Alright, next sample. Man, so I've, uh, I've got um, a hi-hat that I want to use. I found another drum kit on the same album, alright? This song. Um, so it's called You Can't Hurry Love, alright? You Can't Hurry Love. Um... Man, he's got, this guy, this is this some wussy, he makes some wussy music, but, check it out. Alright, that's what we're going to be using, alright? I'm going to sample that and chop it up. Alright, so check this out guys, right? I've chopped up the sample. So I created a 16 pad loop, right? Don't know how many bars that goes for, sorry man. But that's the length of the sample. And as I, I mean, if you watch any of my other videos, you'll see, as I'm uh, picking my sample, I try to create a loop, right? Not for the purposes of looping it, but for the purposes of me being able to track how many pads I'm gonna need to slice it into, right? So in this case, it's 16. Out of that, what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be looking for that snare drum that played on its own. You know what I mean? That's what I'm looking for, man. So I'm hitting the pads and I'm looking for bits and pieces that I could perhaps cut down, perhaps filter, stack, whatever it is, but be able to sort of pluck out little bits of the instrument, all right? So come to the MPC. Let's look, let's look for those pieces, all right? Let's look for those pieces. All right, so one thing that's happening right now is that there is no hi-hat to be found, right? Nothing I can get out of it. But I did find two pads that are really good. This one, 
So it's like a snare with a drum roll. See, all the other ones got noise on them. Oh, there's that. There's that one. And the other one is this one, right? So that one, what it is, it's basically two kicks. All right, two kicks. Now what I'm gonna do is this, all right? Don't worry if you haven't got an MPC. Don't worry if you haven't got an MPC. This is just about how you chop, all right, man? So I'm just showing you guys a little something, a little something here. So if I take this one, right? And I will just look at the waveform, right? This is, this is the waveform here, right? It's actually got two kicks and then like a little bit of a distortion or a little bit of spill there, right? Let me play it for you. Hear that? One, two. One, two. This is two kicks. That means that I'll be able to chop this one pad, right? I'm going to slice this pad into two. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm going to create two separate pads now, man. So instead of it being one, I'm going to split it. And then I'm going to create two. One, two. So I will have two kicks now and one snare out of that drum kit. Right? Oh, actually, I think there's two snares in there. All right? I'm going to use that. All right, let's do it. Because of the way, the nature of, of um, the chopping that we're doing, right? Because of the way that we're chopping, guys. Your best friend is going to be your envelopes, right? Because you're going to get a lot of spill. <clears throat> it's a little bit unconventional how we're trying to sample our, our drums here, right? We're plucking bits and pieces from a song. It's not quite the same as doing it with a break. When you've got a break, it's just the drums are playing on its own. You're only getting drum instrument. With this, we're fighting against synths. We're fighting against other things that are competing inside the track for some presence, right? So what we need to do is we need to trim those bits and pieces off, you know what I mean? But retain the the, the main part of the of the of the drum kit, which is in our case a snare. All right? There's a bit of a drum roll there, there's all that sort of stuff. Now, like I said, the envelope is going to be your best friend, all right? Now, really quickly, guys, right? Hopefully, I can do this under 30 seconds. This is an envelope, right? The envelope basically means when you press a pad, how hard does it come in, does it hold, and how hard does it come off, all right? There's different ways of doing that. When I hit this pad right now, it's playing right across the top, right? But I can change that in the pad. It could come in soft and it could go away soft. All right, let's do that. Okay, consider this your envelope. All right, these are the volumes. Volume is low, the volume is medium, and the volume is high. Okay, right now when I hit the pad, it's hidden high like that. All right, and I could change this to do something different, right? What I needed to do is to come in hard, because I want my snare to come in hard, but I needed to ride off, man. I needed to bend away, so that by the time the pad stops playing, it's smoothed off, man. You're gonna have to do a lot of this, smooth transitions, right? Because, you you, you know, the way we've chopped this, uh, this sample here, it's like really, really abrupt. It comes in really hard all the time, you see? This is the same thing here. It's coming in hard. See, I got the line up there. That double line. It's that line there. It's right there, man. Right there. Look, if I change the decay, you see, I'll start smoothing it off. So it goes from this to then. You hear it coming off? To more. Now it's really, really tight. Okay? That's envelopes. That is. That's exactly what you're gonna have to use a lot of, right? So when I'm talking envelopes and I'm saying I decayed this or I or I slowed down the attack or whatever it is, you know what I'm talking about, all right? All right, let's keep going. So I got my snare, and what I did was I used the envelope to shorten it, right? So now I've got a short snare. Sorry, no, I don't. There it is, right? Nice, nice. Now I'm using my kick, right? Now with the kick, guys, what, what you need to know about the kick is that uh, what I've done is, so I've got my two kicks here. 
That don't really sound like kicks. You hear that? Remember, I I um I split the sample into two, so I ended up with two kicks, right? Now they don't sound like kicks, but they are kicks. Now one trick that you can do is put a low pass on it, and what the low pass does, it, it makes it a little bit more woofy. All right, it focuses a little bit more on the base of that sample because it's got a lot of a lot of um a lot of spill on it, right? And in the same way that we have, I'm just going to do a little sideways thing here. In the same way that our sample, in the same way that our sample will have spill coming in from this direction and this direction, right? Because we're using the envelope to get rid of it, right? And we're chopping it like this and chopping it like that. So we get rid of this and that and we end up with a clean sample. The same way that we're fighting against the spill from the sides, we're also fighting against the spill from the top. You know what I mean? Synths and whatever that, that are playing on top, we're trying to cut them out. And because this is a kick, what we're doing is we're eliminating all of this, right? All of that. And all we're trying to keep is this low part there. So this is going to be the sample. Our kick is going to be that. It's not going to have anything on either side, so we've shortened it up. But now we're going to put a low pass on it to get rid of all the spill from the stuff that's sitting on top of it. All right? Check this out. All right, let me put it up so you can hear it. Oh, already, yeah. See that? It's got a kick now, but it's... It's um, you know, it's really like muffled. Do you know what I mean? It makes it sound grimy as well. All right, the snare's a bit high there, but we'll fix that in a sec. All right, do that to the other one as well. Right, let's move on. Now, same process. I moved on to the next sample, right? Which was this one. Right? All right, that song. Now what I'm doing is, because I'm looking for a hi-hat now, right? It, it doesn't really have a kick, you know what I mean? It's got something cool that maybe we could add on the snare, but the main thing I'm looking for is that hi-hat, man. That hi-hat, that because it's got those, yeah, like that tambourine hit and all that sort of stuff, right? So that's what I was chopping, looking for that sample. That's what we were doing, looking for that sample. Which one is it? Found it. Chop the sides, and now what we're doing is this. Instead of taking the top off, right, because we're keeping the kick at the bottom, because this is a hi-hat, we need to keep the high parts. So what we're doing is we are going upside down, and we're getting rid of the low part to keep the high. Do you know what I mean? Now, I've done that to one pad. This is it. See what I mean? Got rid of the low end because the low end is spill. You know what I mean? We want to get rid of as much of that spill as possible and try to retain, try to keep the sample that we want. Going through it, here's another one. It's got a little bit of spill at the end. All right. So it's about just selecting that sort of stuff. Now, I'll take that, these samples there, the ones that I do like. And what I'll do is, I'll go to my other group of samples that, you know, the, the, the first sample that we made, the first group, right? Eh, quickly, right? So, so I've got this, right? And then I went and I found, you know, one, two, three, four samples out of that, you know, and it's along all my pads, right? I find, let's just say, three here, and what I'm going to do is, I'm going to bring these three samples, I'm going to bring them up there. You know what I'm saying? To this program, to this group of samples, that's what I'll be doing. So that when I end up with my pads, right, when I end up with my pads, because I'll bring these over here, I'll end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like that, you know what I mean? And that's going to be my drum kit. You know what I mean? 
that's what I'm doing. We're mixing both of them. And we're going to try to bring them together in the one set of pads. And the reason why we want to do that is because we want to have an overview of the drum kit. So we could start fixing the volumes up a little bit, adjusting the low pass, adjusting the high pass, working on the on that attack. You know what I mean? Using our envelopes in that so that we can begin shaping the kit. All right, so it doesn't sound all messy. All right, now that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put them all the one um, the one set of pads. All right, let's do it. Cool. So I have them all on there. A few kicks, hi hats, whisk spill. Now, if you watch my last, I think it was my last video, the one before that, I used the double hi hat technique. So I have a hi hat or a tambourine or so whatever this is, right? This shaker thing. And it's got a little spill on the end, but sometimes you can use that to your advantage because that little spill creates like a like the presence of of a double time thing, man. Like you can use that. You know what I mean? So I've left that there. It's not a clean hi hat like like this one. You know what I mean? All right, put it all together. Now let's uh, let's start putting together a sequence so. We could have it all sort of playing at once, and we could start making this uh, this drum kit, or uh, this uh, drum loop. All right, let's do that one by one. Let's go. Now I'm going to keep a very basic kick and snare combo. Right, I'm going to keep it very basic. It's just going to go boom, gun, boom, gun, boom, gun, boom, gun. The reason why is because for this particular beat, we've we've got a lot of unique sounds, right? So I want to keep the kick minimal, the snare minimal, and I want the drum kit itself, like all the bits and pieces, I want that to carry the rhythm, not just the kick. Do you know what I mean? Uh, if you don't, you'll see what I'm saying now, right? So I've got my snare, right? My snare, and I'll do a drum pattern, real basic drum pattern, right? Boom. got a really really basic boom bap um, sequence set looking through this looking for more interesting sounds to add on and I'll be adding on this thing right like this Now, I know it sounds, at the moment, I know it sounds very choppy, it sounds very interrupted. But we haven't worked out the levels just yet, right? I'm, I'm going to do a quick mix in just a sec. But right now, we're trying to keep that rhythm, add rhythm to the sequence. Let's keep going. Guys, now one thing you can do is uh, put the volume down. I've got this in another video, and you know, I explain it a little bit more in another video on how to do some quick mixing. But one thing that's good to do is you put the volume down. And you're listening out for things that are that are sticking out too much, right? In this case, the snare. The snare is way too loud. I can hear it just coming through. So you can quickly even things out, man. Just put the volume down and then work out some of the levels, right? I'm gonna do that for the rest, and then I, I want to put some rhythm on this now. You know what I mean? All right, cool. All right, guys. Now for this. For for um <clears throat> for this beat, something I want to do is I want to look for a sample that I'm going to deliberately use as a low pass sample, right? So one thing that I like about '90s hip hop is that it used a lot of low pass on it, man, right? Low pass filters that allowed the MC to be on top of it, and the low pass usually carried the rhythm, right? So what I'm looking for is a sample that has four chords on it. All right, I'm not interested in something that has a saxophone that plays this funny rhythm or something interesting or some shit. All I'm looking for is I'm looking for a track, uh, an 80s soul, R&B, maybe uh, some funk, Motown, something, something, even jazz, whatever it is, man. But something that carries a four chord progression, I think it is. I think it's called a four chord progression. So, dun. Dun, 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 some shit like that. 
four chords. I'll, that's what I'm listening out for. That, that's what I'm listening out for. So I'm going through the records, and as I'm going through the records, that's what I'm listening out for. I'm not listening out for anything else. I'm not looking for drums anymore. I'm not looking for anything like that. Right? I'm just looking for a four chord progression. That way I can use that, chop it, put the low pass on it, and then have it will have a rhythm on my beat, man. If I'm lucky, it will even have a a, a bass. You know, usually four chord progression samples usually have a pretty good bass. You know, something that uh, that rides that that um, those keys really well. All right, man. All right. So I'm gonna look for that and then present you guys with yeah, with a sample. All right. What I found. So I found something. Check it out. It's by George Benson. All right. Let me see that. George Benson. The album is called Give Me the Night. All right, this guy was smooth with the ladies, man. Lady Slayer. Now, he his track it's called Love X Love. Tell me this guy wasn't getting laid, yeah. Anyway, that's George Benson, charming looking guy, great smile, great sweater. All right, this is the track here. It's the first track on this record, man. But listen now for the progression. <laughs> Sorry man, it's skipping because uh, my record player is shit. Alright man, so I'm going to I'm gonna sample that and um use that as the low pass, alright man? Let's do it. I have it here. <laughs> Alright, now what I want to do is, I want to put a low pass on that, on all of them. Remember, I'm just using it for those four chords, right? So I'm just going to go through and uh, put the low pass on them, alright? I won't waste your time, let me do that. Alright man, so I've got the low passes on them, right? And what I'm doing is, I'm, I'm tuning them down, I like tuning them down. The key that this is all played on, right, is not a key that I like for my for my hip hop music, you know, for my instrumental. I want to bring it down. Right, so C minus three. Now, here's the thing: when I'm playing it at minus three, it stretches out the sample, right? It stretches it out, but it's not enough. If you listen carefully, there's a gap. Where my pads don't don't have a clean transition from one to the next. It's a space. Now I can time stretch. You know what I mean? I can stretch the sample, but I don't want it. So see it's got that gap. But I found that at minus nine now that's really like bringing it down. That's really bringing it down, but I kind of like it. the sequence <laughs> it's cooking uh, sorry guys I forgot to mention man the drums I put the reverb on the drums man I love reverb it kind of washes out some of the some of the interruptions and the, and the spill of, of uh, the kit that we're putting together man it kind of hides it in the in the reverb sound man you see see what I mean Move on. I want to stack another sample, but this is the thing, right? Uh, this is the thing, guys. Here's the thing. I have my sequence, and it's a very neutral beat, right? It's got a unique drum kit, and it's got a four chord progression, right? That's pretty standard. I mean, every single pop song that I could think of was written on a four chord progression, right? There's nothing special about that. But what it is, it's a generic rhythm. And what you can do is add your own flavor to it. Do you know what I mean? It's just a different way of making beats, man. 
add a four chord progression, right? Just find a sample that has it, put the low pass on it, have it playing in the background. Now what I want to do is, is this. I want to grab a jazz record, man, right? And I want to take the keys out of this jazz record. I want to find a, a spot where somebody is jamming and somebody is just playing along with the jazz rhythm, right? But instead of playing along with the jazz rhythm, I'm going to put it on my pads and I'm going to use their keys to play my own rhythm on my own beat. Do you know what I mean? So that's what I'm going to look for. I'm going to look for a sample that has some jazz on it so that I could jam on my four chord progression and then that way I could create my own beat. You know what I mean? But it's going to be a nice layered beat. Do you know what I mean? All right, let's do that. All right, man. Got the sample right here. Now, I used the record that I was showing you, man. Just like some jazz and that sort of stuff, man. Um, <clears throat> it's called Sweet Lorraine. And it's by a fellow named Burwell Parish. And that's Burwell, spelled B-U-R for rabbit, W-E-L-L -L for Larry, right? Parish. Okay, man, that was in 1957, man, which is pretty dope. All right, uh, let me quickly just play a little section of it so you know what I'm talking about. See that? It's just keys, you know? And the way I found that was I not only had those sort of keys playing, but one thing that I like to do, and I've got other videos on this as well, is I like to play my beat while I'm looking for a sample. That way the, the feelings can marry, right? Uh, the video is called the How to Find Perfect Samples, or How to Match Perfect Samples, or something like that, right? So I was playing my, my drums, yeah? Like this. <laughs> Going through it, having a little bit of fun with it, but I found a sample there, uh, so I'm just going to get those keys, and I'm going to create probably about between 16 to 32 pads, man, you know what I mean, a nice big loop, that's why I could, um, and then I could have a good play with it, alright, let's do it. So I've got all the chat, I've got the samples chopped up, they got, they run across, they run across 32 pads, that's uh, two sets of these 16 pads, and um, <clears throat> that's just me sliced. You could do that on whatever you do, right? Um, but again, when I was sampling, I was counting along with the pads. And then when I got to 32, I said, all right, stop. And then I just had to snip the sides. And then I had my 32 pads. I did the even slices, man. Right? So now I've got the pads are chopped. And I minus them. I tuned them down. Minus three. Again, I just like it grimy. And... So it wouldn't interrupt that low pass that I have currently playing. So it wouldn't interrupt with that, uh, interrupt that. So I put a high pass on it. Do you know what I mean? I did the opposite. I got rid of the low end of all this stuff. Got rid of all the bottom end stuff, man. So it would just sit on top of my, uh, my loop there. You know what I mean? Um, that's what I've done there. And then it's just a matter of just jamming and finding a good, good sequence, man. So I have a sequence, right? With the piano. Now you see where that, where that gap is, right? There's a gap there. So what I'm doing is I'm going to fade off that little part of the keys, right? So I'll put it on 16 pads. I've got that last pad and I'll put it on 16 keys, all right? Uh, come to the MPC. This is, the, this is the the sequence here, right? It goes. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun. You know what I mean? So I need that to fade off, man. So what I do is I put it on 16 levels, so it fades away. On my MPC, it's got the 16 levels there. Computers, every, everything can do 16 levels pretty much. If not, just take off the touch sensitive, uh, put the touch sensitivity on, 
and then um, that way you can do it manually by hand. All right. All right. So I'm just gonna add that fade. Right. Let, let me show you this. Right. See. Whoops. Yeah. 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 We'll do that again. Alright? Alright, here's another sequence. Fading off again, you know what I mean? To fill it in. Now, this isn't main chorus or anything, you know what I mean? While the person's rapping, some performance, soon. and then that way, chorus is coming. All right, all right. I might put a little bit uh, something extra on top of it, man. Maybe uh, uh, like like some strings or something like that, man. But I'm running out of time here, man. I gotta get my ass to work. All right, so let's uh, let's do that. All right, guys. I'm a little too strapped for time, man. So what I'm what I've done is is um I've taken the sample that we used the low pass on the the with the, with the chords the progression that George Benson um sample and I put a high pass on it and took the synth out of it. See you here, and I basically loop that. Oh, and I also had this, that sound there, right? There's no need to find the sample, it's basically just somebody singing. It's just when I was just trying a couple things, man. Don't worry about it, right? But it's just there at the start. I just thought it'd be funny, man, to put it in with the quirky uh, uh, pianos. All right, man, let's, uh, let's do a track presentation. All right, guys, track presentation time. I'm going to play the drums. And I'm going to play the kick. I'll put a little bit of compression on it, man. Um, just to sort of bring it together, man. For the sake of the, of the, of the video, so it's not all muggy. All right, check it out. <laughs> Probably a bit loud. Just a fuck. Keys. Right? This. Thanks a lot guys man, you know what, I hope you, uh, everybody enjoyed this uh, this tutorial, you know what I mean, just make it beast man, we're gonna continue to have fun with it, we're gonna continue to muck around, you know what I mean, making beats and doing all that man, so until next time guys, my name is Alonso Magical, peace, stay off the track, uh, the crack, don't hit your kids man, just be good to yourselves man, enjoy your loved ones man, alright, I'll catch you fellas next week, I'll catch everyone next week man, peace.